Hey team, it's Matt from Universal CPA Review. Thanks for tuning in to watch this video that walks you through a cybersecurity example simulation. Now in this simulation, there are eight exhibits and you'll have to read through some memos, emails, quotes, help answer what type of cybersecurity attack was actually brought about on the company as well as which vendor they should choose to ultimately reduce the risk of cybersecurity losses in the future periods, right? So this is gonna be a great simulation. Hopefully it prepares you for the exam. Now real quick, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you would like to join our Facebook study groups, the links are in the description, as well as the 14 day free trial link. And then lastly, please reach out to us about any promotions, as well as the Spilt Milk program. Now let's dive into the video. So in this simulation, we have Chow, and this company is a provider of no-code intelligent automation. Now, I'm not exactly sure what that is, but it sounds pretty intense. Now, throughout year five, Chow did experience a number of different cyber attacks, and guess what? That's damaging the company's reputation, and since they're a public company, it's caused a decline in their stock price of 34.5%, right? So that's over a third of their value just gone from these cyber attacks. So as the prompt tells us, there's two different tasks. Now task number one, what we need to do is utilize the exhibits which are just email communication between Larry, the CTO, and Michelle, the CEO. And in column B, we need to choose the dropdown that best describes the cyber attack that occurred, again, based on that exhibit, which is just email communication. So that's task number one. And task number two, well, because of all these cyber attacks and to respond to the investors' demands, Michelle is saying, okay, we need to implement some sort of cybersecurity software. And she asked Larry to pull some quotes from vendors, and then we're going to use a cost-benefit analysis to help Michelle think about which third-party vendor she should go with. So those are the two tasks. Let's get started. So our first row is the February 21st attack. And pulling up the email communication from Larry, what we read that basically what happened is somebody accessed the ERP system, they locked the company out, and now they're saying, okay, unless you pay me $5 million, I'm not gonna let you have access to your system again, right? So what basically needs to happen here is that Chow will have to pay the hacker $5 million. That's the only way they're gonna get back into their system. Well, when this type of cyber attack occurs and the hacker is demanding payment, this is called a ransomware attack. And it sounds like ransom because it is, right? The ransom is basically saying, pay us the $5 million ransom and we'll give you access to your system back and you can carry on like nothing ever happened, right? So this is going to be an example of ransomware. Now, we don't know whether or not Chow paid that $5 million payment, but they probably did because without it, no more data. So that's a tough way to start out the year. And then on June 30th, when we pull up the email exhibit from June 30th, and we see, well, the hacker accessed customer database and they took some records. Now, Larry's saying, I don't really know exactly how this happened, but here's what I think happened. It looks like somebody in the sales department received a fictitious email and guess what they did? They opened it. And we all know that they shouldn't have, but they opened it. And the problem with that is that there was some malicious code in that email. And as soon as that employee opened the email, well, the malicious code was now released onto the computer, the network, and that is how the hacker stole the customer records. Well, this is going to be an example of a phishing attack. And as you can see in the visual, there's the email, right? So this form of cyber attack is carried out via email. So that is called a phishing attack. So through June 30th, that's only six months through a year. We already have two major cyber attacks. Guess what? August 9th comes, another one hits. So pulling up the email exhibit from Larry, it looks like basically what happened here is the front end e-commerce website is down. And what happened is that someone sent requests to the website from thousands of IP addresses at once until the website crashed. All right, so basically you can think about it as the hacker is sending us so much traffic 
to the URL, right? And our URL needs to respond to those requests, but there's so many of them that it crashes because it can't handle, it's been overloaded. And so this is going to be an example of a distributed denial of service attack. So the visual I have for this distributed denial of service, it's one of my favorite. Like I mentioned, imagine hundreds or thousands of cars all driving in the same direction and they all are trying to get to the same spot, right? They're all trying to access the website at the same time. Well, what will happen? There's going to be a crash because not all these cars can access it at once. So the road's just going to close. In this case, the URL, the website closes down, shuts down. Nobody can access it anymore. That's a major problem for a company because all of a sudden their customers can't buy from them. Or if they need to log in, they can't log in, right? So again, this is called a distributed denial of service. Think about the car crash. So moving on to November 26th, again, we have another cyber attack. So pulling up that exhibit, we see that basically what happened is, is during one of the biggest shopping events of the year, and because of the timing, maybe it was Black Friday, I don't know. But it looks like what happened is that Larry discovered a hacker inserted malware into the checkout page of their website. Now, from most customers' perspective, they would never know this. And from Chow's perspective, they only realized it once they ran a you know test. And basically, what the hacker did is when they put the malicious code into the checkout, well, they're able to strip out the credit card information that the customer puts in, and then they retrieve it. And this happened for 1,300 visitors because this malware was in the checkout for 36 hours. So that is a big problem for Chow because now all of a sudden their customers who believed they were on a valid website and they were, well, all of their credit card information was stolen. Now, when this happens, this type of cyber attack is referred to as form jacking. Crazy name, but it's called form jacking. So what Larry needs to do is figure out how to prevent that in the future. And that is how we get to task number two. So in task number two, Michelle says, enough is enough. Year five was absolutely brutal. I get why investors were so upset. So in year six, we have to implement software to prevent these cybersecurity attacks, or at least reduce the risk or probability of them occurring. So Larry, please go find me some vendors. So we need to pull up the memo from Larry to Michelle about cybersecurity software packages. So what is some of the key information we need to pull out? Well, he does say that Michelle told him that, you know, with no cybersecurity software in place, we estimated a total potential dollar loss of $5 million in year six. And the probability or the risk of loss of that happening is 10%. So 5 million times 10%. That means there's a $500,000 adjusted cost just from the cybersecurity attacks if we don't implement any software. However, I went and got three quotes from leading vendors. And basically what I think these vendors can do is reduce that risk of loss to a much lower percentage. So as we see in that table, right, we have three vendors and the risk of loss percentage. So for CyberShield, 4%. Hack off is 5% and silent night is 3%. Now we could obviously go with the one that provides the lowest risk of loss, but we don't know what the cost is associated with that. And under a cost benefit analysis, we do need to figure out the cost of that risk of loss as well as the cost to implement. So let's get on with it. So there's going to be three basic steps we need to perform. Let's start with step number one, where we calculate the risk of loss for each vendor. So we take that potential loss of $5 million from the memo, multiply by the percentage for each company, right? So for CyberShield, 5 million times 4%, that means the risk of loss is 200,000. Same calculation for Hackoff and Silent Night. And we see that if we just purely base it on this, that Silent Night has the lowest risk of loss at 150,000. So why wouldn't we implement this cybersecurity software? Well, we haven't factored in the cost to implement Silent Night. So that's what we need to do in step number two. Now in step number two, we'll take that risk of loss we just calculated from step number one, but again, we need to add in that one-time cost. And this is where you need to pull up the quotes from each vendor. 
Now, hopefully you knew how to do this. I'm not going to pull them all up, but basically for CyberShield, it said the one-time cost was 100,000, Hack Off was 75,000, and Silent Night was 200,000. So yes, Silent Night had the lowest risk of loss, but they also cost a lot at 200,000. So basically we need to add those two numbers together and we get to the total adjusted cost. So for Cyber Shield, that's 300,000. Hack Off is 325,000. And Silent Night is at the highest at 350,000. So now all of a sudden, Cyber Shield looks like it's the best deal at $300,000 of total adjusted costs. So in step number three, this is where the final decision is made. So on the left, if Michelle said, okay, we're not gonna implement any software, what's our potential adjusted cost, right? Well, the potential loss was $5 million, and that's if the doomsday occur, right? All these attacks happen, but there's only a 10% probability of that happening. So the adjusted cost is 500,000. But if we implement this very well known and reputable company called CyberShield, well, our risk of loss goes down to 300,000. Yes, we still have that potential loss of 5 million, but there's only a 3% chance of that happening. But to implement that, it costs 100,000. Either way, CyberShield is going to be the provider we go with because at 300,000, that reduces our risk of loss by 200,000. So this seems to be the best option for Chow to help prevent or maybe eliminate these cyber attacks during year six. Guess what, investors, hopefully they're smiling. So that was a great simulation on the different types of cyber attacks, as well as in task number two, we learned how to apply a cost benefit analysis to this situation, right? So hopefully you learned a lot here and best of luck on the exam.